Business Combinations, Topic 2, Acquisition Method. The acquisition method is required accounting method for all business combinations. It's important here to determine which company is the acquirer as well as the date of the acquisition. The acquisition method requires the recognition of net assets as well as goodwill at the acquisition date. Friendly reminder from a previous video. Net assets equals total assets less total liabilities. A uh, new term here is goodwill, which we will discuss more in the coming slides. For now, I'd like to point out that goodwill sits as an asset on the statement of financial position in addition to the net assets acquired in the business combination. The acquisition cost. What was the total remuneration, the total consideration provided for this acquired business? Well, we look at the acquisition cost as being the sum of all cash paid, the fair value of any assets given up, the fair value of any shares issued using market price on acquisition date, as well as the fair value of any contingent consideration. Please note that this acquisition cost, this does not include any transaction fees, such as lawyer fees or accountant fees, which should be expensed, or any costs to issue debt, which should decrease the proceeds from the debt issuance. The acquirer recognizes the fair value of identifiable assets and liabilities acquired. Note that this is not necessarily the name as assets and liabilities on the acquirer's balance sheet, but rather the acquirer's financial statements will act as a starting point. So certain assets may need to be newly recognized, such as a patent or a customer list. We, we may also need to recognize certain items uh, that may need to be revalued to fair value. Goodwill on the acquiree's balance sheet from previous acquisitions is not an identifiable asset. This is an important item to keep in mind because as a business purchasing another business, you are not acquiring the goodwill present on their financial statements. That is, you can't purchase someone else's goodwill. However, you may have goodwill that arises from this current business combination. Let's talk about that more. What is goodwill? Goodwill is created when the acquisition cost is greater than the fair value net assets or the fair value FVNA, which is the acquirer paid more than the acquiree appears to be worth. It is a way of recognizing the investor sees value in a company as a whole in excess of the sum of its individual net assets. This goodwill may be positive or negative. Negative goodwill occurs when the FVNA, fair value net assets, exceeds the acquisition costs and it is immediately recognized as a gain. This gain represents a quote unquote good deal on the part of the investor, which is why it is immediately recognized as a credit to the statement of financial performance. Note, goodwill, positive goodwill, doesn't necessarily represent a bad deal, but rather is recognition that the investor paid in excess of the fair value of the sum of the individual net assets. Because you cannot record an individual asset above its fair value, the goodwill asset was created at acquisition of the business. The very fact that the investor paid the amount uh, is sufficient proof that the fair value of the company is worth more than the sum of its individual net assets. Otherwise, why would they pay that price for it? Now, subsequent to acquisition, Goodwill is subject to annual impairment testing and written down if necessary. Let's look at an example. Take two companies. We have company P and company S, each with their own respective assets, liabilities, and equity. I'm going to switch to a, an Excel spreadsheet to lay out the rest of this as we are now going to look at if company P acquired company S's net assets on January 1st of 2021 for 350000 what would that whole transaction look like? So again, I'm going to pause the video, come back in Excel and continue.
All right, so welcome back. Here we have our company P and company S as at December 31st of 2020. And then the very next day, January 1st of 2021, company P acquired company S's net assets. That is, they went into their a &W and purchased all of their stoves and all of their drinking fountains, um, booths, et cetera, and um, assumed all of the outstanding liabilities. They did so for 350,000. And the uh, information on company S is as follows. They have a book value of assets and liabilities of 600 and 330,000 uh, respectively, which corresponds to the book values that we have up here. So no surprise, but here we have difference between book value and fair value. And since company P purchased company S, we need to find out what goodwill is. So goodwill, if you recall from a previous slide, equals the acquisition costs less the net assets. So here we have our total acquisition costs, and that is equal to the, tum, the, sum, tum, the sum of all consideration received, which here was just the cash of $350,000. And then next we have less uh, the net assets, um, and that's the fair value net assets of um, S. So when we look at net assets, that is the assets less the liabilities and that gives us the net assets so um here we go equals the sum of the net assets of 300,000 so goodwill is equal to the acquisition price paid which was 350 less the net assets of company s so goodwill here represents $50,000 so let's look at this in terms of journal entries. So we have our parent P, our company, our acquirer E, um, that purchased this company. So they are going to get a debit of assets and they acquire, again, the fair value of those assets. So they'll get a debit of 580 and they also acquired the fair value of the liabilities. So they'll be receiving those 280. So those are gonna be smushed upon um, company P's books. They also, company P, in order to, oops, and I'll just say that this is credit liabilities. And uh, company P also gave up uh, cash in the amount of 350,000 in order to make this transaction happen. But in doing so, they paid $50,000 above the fair value of the net assets, which represents the goodwill. And that would be the $50,000 here. So that's the journal entry to record the, to record P's acquisition of um, S's net assets. And because I'm an accountant and I like some checks, I'm just gonna do a quick debits and credits check so sum this up and I get 630, sum this up and I get 630 and I am happy. I have my debits, my credits, my numbers balance, as well as a short description. So now let's go and look at what this would look like on company P's financial statements as at January 1st. So we're just gonna take this and move it down here. And we have our company P right before at, at right before acquisition, we're gonna look at our debits, we're gonna look at our credits, and this would be company P after acquisition. And our debits and credits, we're gonna simply do the worksheet method which shows our debits, we have a debit to assets here, Oops. equals 580. Uh, we also have a credit, our credit to cash right here. Um, we have another debit, did anybody see that? We have the 580 for the debit to the assets, and then we also have a debit to Goodwill for 50,000. We have our credit to cash, which is an asset, and we also have a credit to liabilities here. Okay, so let's look. We take this at, and we take our assets, and because assets are in a debit position, we would add our debits and we would subtract any credits to get an after acquisition assets balance of 1.78 million. Then we have our liabilities 
and we would minus credits because the $600,000 in liabilities before acquisition, that's a credit. So a credit plus a credit equals, oh, pardon me, a credit <laughs> ah, plus a credit equals 880,000. And then we have our equity and there's no debits or credits to equity and that equals 900,000. We take our assets equals liabilities plus equity. We double check and we do in fact have assets of 1.78 million equals liabilities plus equity equals 1.78 million. Uh, so here we can have some comfort that we've recorded company P's transaction correctly as the books do balance. Okay, now let's take a moment and let's move on to company S's books. What do you think company S's books look like after somebody went in and purchased all of their net assets? Well, let me tell you this. This goodwill, that happens on the books of the pe person that acquired the assets. So because S's assets were acquired, this is not applicable. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna erase all this and we're gonna figure out what does it feel like to be the a w who somebody went in, stripped us of all of our assets. What are we left with after somebody takes out all of our pop machines and um, <laughs> all of our liabilities? So we're gonna start off with our assets and liabilities beforehand. What did this thing look like before? Okay. And then let's think about the debits and the credits and let's try to look at, so this is our before, let's try to think about what it looks like afterwards. So somebody came in and they said, hey, we're gonna buy all of your net assets. So you're gonna give us your liabilities. So we'd have to decrease our liabilities by a debit of 300,000, 330,000. And then they said, hey, we also want all of your assets. So in order to decrease our assets, that's a credit of 600,000. Now notice how I'm doing the amounts that were on the book and not their fair value. That's because I am now looking at this from company S's perspective. And I'm looking at it as I have to remove what's on my books and the book value is what I need to remove. Remember, um, we cannot write up and down our assets as company S or um, write up or down our liabilities. They're, our, they're recorded at book value. So at acquisition, we simply remove what we have. Now, we gave up our net assets, our liabilities of 330,000, our assets of 600,000. We got stuff too. So we also got uh, we gained cash, so we got $350,000 from this transaction. So not too shabby. So our net assets were $600,000 minus $350,000. That means, uh, if just looking at our book value, $600,000 minus $330,000, we had book value of net assets of two seventy. dollars Yet somebody gave us 350,000 for all of that. We get to recognize that as a gain on sale of net assets. So that difference there, the difference between what was paid, the cash, and the net assets, so 350 minus the 600,000 plus our 330 here, that's a gain on sale of $80,000. Uh, so, and just do my accounting double check, 680 for a credit, 680 for a debit, and this is to record uh, company S selling all their net assets. So now we have essentially a shell of a company. There's no more assets, no more liabilities left. So let's see what this would look like on company S's books. Let's simply transpose our debits and credits from what happened to company S and put them here. So liabilities, we have a debit of liabilities of 330. We have a debit to cash of 350. We have a credit to assets of 600,000. And we have a credit to a gain on sale of um, net assets of 80,000. So that is a gain on the income statement. 
and the income statement uh, articulates down all the way through to equity. So on our statement of financial position, this would be a credit to our equity account once it articulates all the way through. I'm going to do a quick quick double check, make sure my debits equal my credits. They do, which means I transpose these accurately. Now let's take a look at what company S looks like afterwards. My assets are in a debit position. So I'm going to add all of my debits and subtract all of my credits. My liabilities are in a credit position. So I'm going to minus all of my debits. And my equity is in a credit position, so I'm going to add all of my uh, all of my credits here, and I'm left with assets equals liabilities plus equity. So this balance is here, which means that after Company S sells all their net assets, they're left with cash and equity in their shell of a company, which intuitively makes sense. They shouldn't have anything left other than that what they were given after they sell everything, which is what is representative of when they sell their net assets. Now, I want you to keep that and hold that in your mind because we just looked at a comprehensive, basic comprehensive example of what happens when a company acquires and when a company sells their net assets. This is gonna look quite different from when a company acquires the shares of another company, okay? Both demonstrate control both represent business combinations, but both will leave the beginning and ending financial statements for both the acquirer and acquiree looking quite different. Okay, let's go back to the slides and finish off with an MCQ. Which of the following information about the acquiree would not need to be considered when calculating identifiable net assets? Is it A, their equipment is recorded at 40,000, but is actually worth 15,000. B, they have issued bonds recorded at 60,000 at year end, but at the acquisition date, they are worth 80,000 on the open market. C, their common shares are trading $4 higher than they were at year end. If you said C, their common shares are trading $4 higher than they were at year end, you'd be correct. The fair value of equity has no bearing on the fair value net assets, and all the other options do in fact impact the fair value of either an asset or a liability. Well done. One more video. You're doing so great. I will see you in the next one. Talk soon.